This is a, an overview of parameterizing a model for use in either CFX or Fluent for um, multiple simulations. So we can parameterize either geometry or boundary conditions. And it's done in Workbench. So if you're used to using uh, CFX or Fluent and standalone mode, you will need to use Workbench for this. And this is how it's controlled. Here I've got a basic CFX simulation set up. Um, I've got the geometry created in space claim. So if I open up space claim, we can see the geometry here, and we just need to get access to some of the dimensions. Now, typically, space claim is non-dimensionalized, so we know in our feature tree, if we double click on it, um, there are no dimensions listed. However, we can get access to some uh, dimensions by doing a pull or a move command. So if we click on pull, and we come to the cylinder here, you see we've got a radius and we can pull it to make it larger and smaller and right next to it is a little P icon and if we click on P it adds that as a parameter. Okay, so if we come over to this uh, feature tree here, if I go to the groups tab you can see now I've got this one group there and that's a rule dimension and we can change that dimension there. Similarly, I could change the angle of that uh, of a pipe. So I've got a second pipe here, and I'll just show you an example of that. In this case, I'd use the move tool. If I grab this outer cylindrical surface, and I also select the end cap surface, and I just move this um, uh, location anchor to the circle, you can see how that circle is highlighted. If I drop it right on that circle, it'll center that um, triad right in the middle of that circle and I can swing the angle around, for example, and as soon as that dimension comes up, again, I get a little P icon, and if I click on that, it's added a second parameter in there. Um, I could go ahead and rename those. Now I've got two dimensions. So now if I minimize this and go back to my workbench, you can see that it's added in this parameter set. So it's done this automatically, and it's created this parameter set. If I double click on that, um, it brings up this dimension these two dimensions, sorry, the uh, the diameter of the first cylinder and the angle of the second cylinder. I can go ahead and change them. Uh, let's set this to be 50 degrees. And if I close this down with this X key, you can notice it needs a refresh. So if I do a quick refresh and I come back into my space claim, you can see it's now stretched out to 50 degrees. Okay, so now that's done, that's parameterized. I can go through, uh, I'll regenerate the mesh. And then I could go ahead and open up the preprocessor uh, and show you the rest of the parameterization. Before I do that, however, what I wanted to show you was an alternative that we can do in the geometry. Um, in this case, I've got something a little bit different. Um, I've got an aerofoil. Uh, and it's facing, uh, we would have this face in the wind here, and we may want to adjust the angle of the aerofoil. So instead of just using the actual dimensions or the move or pull tool, which I could use before on a simple single body, in this case we want to rotate this um, cylinder that the air, aerofoil is in uh, and have the angle rotate. So to do that, I've set up a couple planes and we need to actually add a dimension to it. So I click on this plane here that's um, running right through the center of the domain and I go into my detail tab and I click on dimension and I'm going to actually create a dimension between this horizontal face and this vertical plane here so you can see as I click things the dimension changes I've just clicked the horizontal face and it's given me a length but if I come over here and click this vertical dimension it gives me this angle if I move where the angles placed it um, changes the type of angle but I'll put it right here and that set me up with an angle. Now, when I come through, and this is a sort of necessary, necessary step when we have these multi multi bodies here, um, this extra step, when I come through to my design tab and I go to my move tool, I need to make sure that I triple click on this body to make sure I'm selecting a solid. I could use this filter down here, um, turn off the smart and make sure I'm picking a body, a solid body. The alternative in space claim is to triple click. So if I come over here, I'll leave the smart on and I triple click this one, two, three. And now I've gotten that um, triad moving around the, the solid. And I'm going to drag this again with this golden ball. It means it is not properly anchored, the triad for moving it. And I'm going to plop it right on that uh, curve and that should center it for me 
on the on the middle of that um, plane. Now, when I come to do the same move, if I click on this um, rotate arrow, the blue, click on the same move, I get a little asterisk by this number, by this dimension, this 90 degrees. So if I click on that, um, I can then, now it gives me this changeable number, this editable number, and I can click on create parameter and it'll create that that um, parameterization of that that uh, dimension. Same thing again when I come back into my workbench, I've got a couple open here, um, it's popped a parameter set in there and I can control that. So when I come into space claim, I can either control it here, uh, let's make that 45 degrees, and you can see it's put the, um, um, and it's put that aerofoil at a, a 45 degree pitch angle. Okay, so that's just a second option if you do have multiple parts and you need to move them relative to each other. You do need to create that um, datum plane and then create a, a, a dimension. Um, and then when you go to do the move, you, you, the uh, orientation of this part is controlled by the dimension that you've created. Okay, so having said that, we'll get back to our original. And I'm going to go ahead and open up Pre. So within Pre, we can also create um, parameters that we can vary uh, over multiple simulations. A uh, common example would be a boundary condition. So here I've got the inlet set, and I've given it a fixed uh, value boundary condition, uh, velocity 10 meters per second. If we wanted to vary that, we'd actually have to make an expression. It's easy enough to do. We come under Expressions, right mouse button, insert an expression. We'll call it inlet velocity and um, we'll give it a value 10 meters per second and hit apply and then we simply come over right mouse button and we click this use as workbench input parameter then we have to link this um, expression to the boundary condition so if I come back into my outline go to my inlet boundary condition and the details I change this um, fixed value input to an expression so I just click on this button here and I can use the right mouse button and pick the expression that I've created so as soon as we do that again if we come back to our workbench and it's under this one and I look at my parameter set you can see now I've also added that inlet velocity as a different parameter so I've got the now the diameter of that one cylinder the angle of the second cylinder and the inlet velocity as a third input parameter. Um, and then similarly, uh, in post, we also make expressions and we make them outlet parameters. So I'll go ahead and show that. I'll shut this down. So this was a run already done, completed, and I've got it in post. And again, I just come into the expressions, hit right mouse button, and let's say we want to know what the pressure drop is from inlet to outlet. Since the velocity at the inlet is fixed and the outlet is set to atmospheric, then the pressure drop is just going to be the pressure value at the inlet. So we can set that. Let's call it pressure drop. And we'll do right mouse button and we can build up our expression with our right mouse button menus. So we're going to do an area average of the pressure. Um, and the variable there is going to be pressure. Again, right mouse button avoids any syntax because expressions are case sensitive and the location is going to be the inlet. So the pressure value at the inlet um, minus zero, which is the pressure value at the outlet relative to atmosphere, is going to be the actual pressure drop. And we said apply and then we come here and we do a right mouse button and here we select use as workbench output parameter. So this is outputting it to our result rather than as an input to control the simulation. So now when we come back into Workbench, we'll shut this down. Um, now we've got a complete loop. We've got our input parameter controlling the simulation. We've got three of them, and we've got an output parameter that we're going to monitor. So again, that's all been automatically created. We didn't have to manually input anything there. And if we double click on this, to simply set up an array of simulations, we just come in, click in here, and we can give this a different radius, or a different diameter, sorry. This we can give a different angle, um, and then we can keep the velocity the same. In this second one we can increase the velocity again just click on these. We'll keep that at 35 and then we can make, make that 6 for example. Uh, and then simply come up here and we can hit update all design points. One key thing I'm going to point out here is that um, there's an option in column F here to retain the results files. Obviously every time we run a simulation it's going to generate a result file and that can get quite large. 
so we can have the option of not retaining them. If we're only interested in the pressure drop calculation and we don't really care about looking at the results, then we would leave this checked off and that would minimize how many results files get written out. Um, but if we did want to post-process each individual result file, then we could turn them on knowing, of course, that this could take a significant amount of disk space. But that's how we would parameterize a simulation in Workbench for CFX. For completeness, uh, the process is exactly the same with Fluent. Um, we can do the same thing in the geometry. In the same way, we can also click on Pull, select the cylinder, and we get the P by the side of the dimension. Um, we could do, and again, that creates this driving dimension here automatically. And um, we could set the angle of this pipe here as well. Um, and then when we go back into our um, workbench project, this parameter set has been set up. Then we can come into Fluent, and again we can use boundary conditions and outputs as parameters. So here we have the setup in Fluent, um, and I just come across the boundary conditions. I've got an inlet already predefined. Uh, unlike CFX, I don't need to create an expression. I can. We do have expression editor in Fluent, but I can just simply come across here. Again, we use 10 meters per second for the velocity. And then if I come over to the side and click this arrow, I have the um, parameters, new input parameter expressions, and uh, and that creates a parameter expression for me automatically. And then that's actually managed down here at the bottom on the left-hand screen. We have parameters, input parameters. Um, and since we do post-processing directly within the same interface in Fluent rather than go into a separate post-processor like CFX, we can also create an output parameter. So we come here to the output parameters, do a right mouse button, create um, from report definitions, and we can create our own new report definition. So again, we could do an area weighted average of the um, pressure, for example, at the inlet, and say OK. And... Uh, click on uh, create output parameter and you can see that's listed here now in the feature tree and if we get close and we come over to our workbench project you can see again we've got that complete cycle like we had with CFX and we can control those simulations and again we've got our um, radius of the cylinder uh, velocity I didn't create the angular one this one in this in this example just for speed and then we've got our pressure uh, as an outlet parameter and again we've got this column to retain um, retain results files so if we create multiples of these again you just simply click in here hit 7 and keep that at, uh, maybe 12 there and you just keep clicking away uh, if you want to get rid of them right mouse button and delete design point uh, and then you come up here when you're done and hit update all design points and it'll run through them all sequentially so that's an overview of parameterizing CFD simulations for both geometry, boundary conditions, and also creating output parameters from the post-processing.